Hello and welcome to this video where I'll show you how to send files using WinSCP and SFTP programmatically with PowerShell. I've written a very basic script which will take you through step by step to see how to use and work with the WinSCP.NET assembly. So I've encapsulated this in a try and catch block so that there are any errors that we can catch these and output them to the console. Our first step is to load the .NET assembly. We use the command add type. Our next step is to set up the session options. So we create a new object, winscp.sessionoptions. We use the following properties. We're going to use protocol, which is SFTP, hostname, which is the IP address of the destination SFTP server, and username, which we're using SFTP user and the password. We can ignore private key path and passphrase at the moment. We're only using username and password to connect to the SFTP server. You also need the SSH host key fingerprint. This can be got from the SFTP server itself. So we'll just run this and we can have a look at session options. We'll pass it to get member and you'll see all the other properties that are available and methods. Next, we need to create the actual object that will connect to the SFTP server. So we pass this into dollar session. We create new object winscp.session. So our next task is to gather some files. So I'm using dollar file list for this and I have four test files in a data directory. I've also added a bit of logic to make sure that we get files that the last write time was more than 20 seconds ago. This is to make sure that another process is not accessing them at the moment. And there you see the files we have. Next, we need to actually connect and transfer the files. So the first thing I'm setting up, which is quite handy, is a debug log path. This gives you quite extensive data on data and diagnostics on the, the connection to your SFTP server, which we'll have a look at once we've run this. Then we'll actually use the open method with the session options to open a session to the server. I've also got transfer options where I create a new object to pass in the transfer options we want to use. So we're opting to use the transfer option and transfer mode binary. So we can have a look at that. And you'll see the other properties that you can use within that object. So next, we're going to loop through the file list and we are going to put the files using the put files method across to the SFTP server with the transfer options, which is binary. After that, for each file that's transferred, uh, we're using transfer result. We are going to write to the console whether the file uploaded successfully. And there you see We've got five files that have now been uploaded. The final command we run is $session.dispose. Disconnect us from the SFTP server. And we have our catch statement finally, which will catch any errors or exceptions and write them to the console for us. So in that example, we use the script to basically send a file using username and password. We can have a look at the log file and you'll see we get quite extensive data on the transfer itself. So if you want to increase the level of security that you use, we can go back to where we set our session options and we can use a username and password and also a private and public key. So I've created a user called SSH user on the SFTP server and attached to that user on the SFTP server is a public key. So if I take out the private key, which is on the local workstation, and this is the path to the private key, it's SSH user dash private dot PPK and also the passphrase for that key. So now when we connect, we not only need to use a username and password, we need to use second form of authentication, which will be the public private key. So we can just run this script in its entirety now. And there you'll see the files have been transferred successfully. You can have a look at the log again. And you can see there there's test4.txt. So you can essentially read back and see all the files that have moved across and the associated transfer data. And we can also see here in this line, SSH user, and you'll see where the private key and the passphrase has been passed to the server. Thank you for watching this video.